So a little love for our new athletic director at his alma mater, huh? That's right. I didn't know there was a Pat Craft jersey hanging in Bloomington's best bar, but sure enough, there is. <laughs> I, I think that's that's really cool. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, it's been there all along. I never knew who the guy was until we hired him a year ago. So, is, Do you know why they hung it? He's an Indiana legend. Because he's a legend. I guess. I and didn't, I didn't soon know to be a Penn State legend. Yes. I'll tell you what, we string a few more wins like that together and he will be. Grab your pencil and your paper, everybody. It's the obligatory PSU pregame show. What's up, everybody? It is the obligatory PSU pregame show. Nittany Lions are 7-2 and two, and maybe on something of a roll. Yep, that's good. I'm your fake host, Chris Bucanani. Oh. I am joined by my two best partners in crime. Okay. No offense to Noble, who is just like MIA at this point. The NFL <laughs> right, has yeah. stolen him away from us. But I do have beloved campus icon Mike the Mailman. Hi, everybody. We do miss Brandon, but we'll, we'll try to do the best without him. I do. I do miss him. I hate to admit it, <laughs> especially on camera. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, Somebody who I'm sure would be even more deeply missed were he to ever leave the program, former OnwardState.com managing editor Kevin Horn. Well, Noble declared for the NFL draft early, just like he's always been critical of for the current college athlete. Here we are, it's full <laughs> circle. <laughs> That's right. Well, I don't know where he, his daughter just won uh, for Bryant swimming, Bryant University yeah. swimming, like the conference championship. So he was up there Good. for some. Yeah, some awesome. Congratulations to yeah. Grace and the rest of the team up there at Bryant. But. Let's talk about the Nittany Lions versus the Hoosiers. You were out in Bloomington, Gav. You were sure. alluding prior to the intro that you saw Pat Kraft's jersey hanging on the wall sure. at Nick's English Hut. And in fact, Pat Kraft himself. Is, is that right? He went to Nick's. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Very good. Uh, Sandy would never. But. Well, I, I saw Pat was really jazzed up on the sidelines, and why not? Because they did exactly what you want Penn State to do to what we said was a terrible team. and. He is, in fact, a terrible team. Sure, yeah, slow start, but Indiana didn't have any quarterbacks, and Penn State did what it did. Um, didn't get Alar, I think, as much snap, as many snaps as they probably had hoped, or the fans had hoped, but did all right when he got in there. Um, that, that sort of is a, is a tired argument. James is not gonna play LR any more than he already has, so it'll be Sean the rest of the way. Running backs, I mean, Indiana has, again, De just a depleted team that Tom Allen has lost. That they, if they can find a booster to pay Tom Allen out, he will probably be fired at the end of the year. Um, I don't know if they have such a booster. <coughs> but turn uh, around, huh? But when Penn State's playing Indiana's third string quarterback and just annihilating the guy, um, and they can't run the ball, it, you know, it was it was just over. Slow start. I mean, it, it, you know, Sean threw the first interception there in, in the first quarter. You get out of the first quarter. I think it was might have been three nothing in the first quarter, something like that, and you start. Uh, one of the one of these slogs in a windy Bloomington today, but um, no running backs. I think they combined for like 150, uh, fairly even there. Katron was running like a beast, uh, more almost five yards to carry on average for both of the, our our backs and Singleton and and uh, Katron Allen. So yeah, that was I mean nice. It's just that's what you got to do to Indiana. You can't hang with them. Well, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, <clears throat> I go back, I go way back watching Penn State football, and uh, you're used to seeing Penn State dominate teams. I remember the first. Quarters one seven seven, but after that it was all Penn State. It was just so so relaxing to watch the Penn State game. It was nice, <laughs> wasn't it? It was like I all enjoyed these it. Days of the last so many years have been like we don't know the outcome before the end. Of I, Indiana is a team that has put a lot of Big Ten fan bases on pins and needles over the last several years yep. under Tom Allen. At rarely have they closed the deal, but uh, especially if it's a non-fake COVID season. Oh yeah, but. I was happy to see none of that. Yep. Talking about watching the Nittany Lions for a long time, yep. it has been so refreshing <laughs> to see them not just put away bad teams, but to have a consistent ground game. Yeah. Yeah. The, the run game last year was so bad. Yeah, it was bad. And what I am really encouraged about, uh, beside the totally remarkable stat, that we now have two true freshman running backs who, with games to go, have tied the program record mm -hmm. for touchdowns, rushing touchdowns by a, a freshman tailback. But you were looking for improvement coming into the season from the offensive line, line and the offense in general, and in particular, two assistants who you had questions about in Mike Yersich and Phil Troutwine. 
And I think it's hard to argue at this point, especially when you see Drew Shelton come in and yeah, against lesser competition, but a true freshman in his first start filling capably for a guy who's gonna be a first round pick in Fashionu. I think it's tough, Kev, to argue that Phil Troutwine especially, and but your such as well, haven't made strong cases for improvement in this season. Yeah, the, the line held up, um, and, and not for nothing. I mean, the rushing attack was great, but the passing attack was, was good too, and, and yep. the pass, um, pass block has been uh, probably better than, than the rush block this year. Mm. Um, and against good teams too. Clean pockets. I mean, it was, you, know, you, you don't hold up as well against Ohio State as you do against Indiana. But for the problems we had on the right side of the line against the Buckeyes, there was a lot of good stuff on tape, too. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And look, Clifford is one of the worst quarterbacks in the country under, under pressure. That's a statistic that is, that is settled. But in the pocket, he, he's fine. He can throw, the, you know, throw a ball up and um, make plays. I mean, 11 Penn State uh, receivers caught balls yeah. last That's Saturday. Not receivers, but 11 Penn State players caught yeah, balls. Right. Theo Johnson had one of the best catches I think I've seen. Brenton Strange. Brenton yeah, Strange, yeah. rather, of the season. Oh, he caught man. the ball on the guy's back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it was uh, incredible. I hadn't heard from him in a few games, and that was, that was awesome to see. So, yeah, uh, yeah, the O-line's held up. I mean, the, the right side is, is still, there's still some holes to fill, right? The Wallace, after side. Um, although they played reasonably well um, <clears throat> uh, on Saturday against Indiana, and I think should the rest of the way, given the competition on the other side of the ball. Uh, Michigan State is the only formidable defensive line, and their defensive line is half out because they were fighting Michigan players in the tunnel, so not a lot to it there. And, and the defense looked really good. I mean, they look a lot quicker. I mean, they, they I mean, I, I understand in, in the end they have a quarterback to speak of, but I mean, the running game, they, 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 there's no way they got to get any yards. It was, they were all over them. We've talked about it, we talked about it last week, the, this four game stretch, is about doing what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. against teams with lesser talent. Mm -hmm. And through the first of those four weeks, so far so good. Yeah. I also think you look up and down the roster, Mike, you talked about the defense, you talk about the O-line, you look at the skill positions, and you s see what we got out of Drew Aller from the quarterback spot. The future is now at Penn State. Mm -hmm. For all the criticism that has been leveled at James Franklin on this program and elsewhere in the press, some of it, I think, very much valid, some of it maybe not so much. I have been pretty consistent, and Kev, you have too, I think we all have, that, you know, I don't know that we're gonna do better, and the guy has absolutely earned the right to show what he can do with the level of talent he has brought in, which for my money is the best we have recruited to Penn State under James Franklin, mm -hmm. and when you look at the number of true freshmen making an immediate impact yep. up and down the roster, and you look at what I just talked about, market improvement from some of the key assistants who absolutely had to step up with their respective position groups, there's a lot to get excited about. And with the Big Ten title functionally off the table at this point, the remainder of this season is make us, make the boosters, make the press, and make recruits feel good about the future of Penn State football. And again, through one of four weeks, mission accomplished. Yeah, and I do feel good about Penn State football, right? Yeah, I know. I yeah, know. It, it, it makes, just, it does make you feel good watching these, them play how they played Saturday. It's like, yeah, I can't wait till next week. Team feels different because I think last year and in, in the previous, in the last two years, I would have felt, oh, this Maryland game, Penn State's going to lose this Maryland game. This is just, you just know before going in, Penn State yeah. will lose this yeah. Maryland game because yeah, right. it's the one game they're going to lose that they're not supposed to. This year just feels different. They seem more talented, more put together, more cohesive, yeah. uh, have a better game plan. I do like Manny Diaz's defense a little bit more in, in situations like this than I did like Brent Prize. So yeah, I feel positive. I mean, I'm not to look ahead, Mike, because it's one and zero, of course. Um, uh, but I, I, I'm going to pick Penn State to win ten games next year. We'll uh, see. I mean, I, I, I'm. It's been a, it's been a good season. Three more games to close out uh, should be no problem. Should be two and a half to three touchdown favors against each of them. Yep. You're not quite there with the top two teams in the division, both of whom might be in the playoffs. We'll talk about that later in the show. But can you be one notch below? Mm -hmm. It's looking like we are. We got something very fun on the other side of the break from our friends at For the Bloggy, so stay tuned to the obligatory PSU pregame so show. And welcome back, everybody, to the obligatory PSU pregame show from Champs Downtown. As you undoubtedly know, USC and UCLA soon to become our brethren in the Big Ten Conference. And our good friends at For the Bloggy, a great site we encourage you to check out at ForTheBloggy.com, have put together something a little special with some perspective from the left coast. We love For the Bloggy. Yeah. Caduti, arm wrestling, man. I got you. You hear that, Nick? All right, it's coming up. Enjoy it for thebloggy.com. Thanks so much. It's a great piece. Hope you enjoy it. 
I'm here in the heart of Big Ten country, Los Angeles, California. Sunny, star-studded Southern California, home to the greatest lake of them all, the Pacific Ocean. Big Ten football! Like Pam Ward announcing an 11 a.m. Illinois-Purdue game, the enthusiasm around Los Angeles for USC and UCLA to join the Big Ten is palpable. Are you guys excited for that? Uh, I kind of. Are you guys excited for the Big Ten? The Big Ten? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Can't wait to go to New Jersey. Wow, Rutgers. You guys excited for Big Ten football? I don't know what Big Ten football is. <laughs> you guys excited for Big Ten football? What is that, some kind of new league or something? Big Ten football! Hey, who's winning the Big Ten this year? I don't know about Big Ten football. <laughs> do you think UCLA and USC are going to do well in the Big Ten? No. Well, none of these streets are abuzz with excitement. Maybe I'm on the wrong streets. Go Big Red! Go Big Red! O-H! O-H! We are! We are! We are! Thank you! Hey man, shut up! All the streets I've walked down have led only to dead ends. No flags, no fandom, no fervor. But it is game day morning, so my future Big Ten brethren are probably already tailgating. Do you know what time people usually start tailgating around here? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's seven hours before the game. That's it, when they're now. Isn't that about right now? They'll be showing up pretty soon. Hours later, fans begin pouring in around the stadium. I've finally found them. People as excited as me for Pac-12, I mean Big Ten, football. <laughs> I'm not watching you. <laughs> When you first walked up, I was like, what the hell is he doing? I'm Big Ten ready, though. Yeah, you are definitely Big Ten ready. You're not going to find any snow here. You got to lose that jacket. Put That's some shorts on. What is that on your head? And put on some shades here in L.A. All these nice-looking ladies, you need some dark shades so you don't get your head slapped off. After they get done roasting me and teaching me all about California customs, we'll get down to talking Big Ten football. Looks like some kind of cat. Uh, got a little trophy, cat, on top. trophy on top. Looks like somewhere out of the Ten Commandments, yeah. but who knows what it is. I don't know. Tiger? Maybe? Cub? <laughs> Your nifty lion. Ooh, what's it called? Nifty lion? Nifty lion? I'm gonna go Pokemon on this. Maybe a squiddle of some sort. <laughs> We thought that was a urn. Whose ashes are in there? Whoever lost their, their ashes are in there or something? I don't know who would play for that. That's, that's some Midwestern stuff right there. I'm starting to think these Californians aren't quite up to speed or ready for Big Ten football. Maybe it's all just a lost cause trying to find Big Ten fervor in Los Angeles. Does this feel like Big Ten country? Not this weather, no. Cold here is what, 60? A lot of our players are from out here, so they're not built to play in snow. The boys need to get accustomed to going in the snow, take an ice bath for 24 hours, get used to it. Send them boys to the cold during their winter break. That's your training. That's your training. Training, that's it. Maybe these Californians aren't ready yet. Maybe I have to get them. Big Ten ready. Maybe I have to create Big Ten fervor. If there's one thing Big Ten football has taught me, it's that sure, progress may be slow. In fact, it will be slow. Hard-nosed football, round to pound. But if you keep pounding and pounding and pounding, we are Penn State. Eventually, maybe you'll score. So I'm gonna keep pounding here in Los Angeles. There's hope yet for these Angelinos. If our conference can brazenly call itself the Big Ten, even with soon to be 16 teams, then I'm confident I can get these Angelinos ready and excited for Big Ten football. Welcome to Big Ten 101. That says B1G1G1. Those are zeros. Pretty sure they're Gs. Trying to figure out where the eye is. And that's why you're here. Prepare yourself to learn all there is to know 
about Big Ten football. To begin with, Big Ten weather. What do you consider to be cold weather? 72? Wrong! 65? Wrong! 75? Wrong! 75 would be a heat wave in Big Ten country. If you're going to root on your Big Ten teams in Big Ten stadiums, you need to prepare yourself for four quarters of cold, icy, snowy, miserable conditions. Weather so bad, you'll be praying to die by the end of it. You go to a Big Ten tailgate. What do you bring? Celery sticks, uh, mini acai bowls, seltzers. Hard to tell. Wrong! What do you bring? Nachos. Well, all right. <laughs> Gluten free chips with vegan cheese and vegan bacon bites. <laughs> what the hell even is that? I was gonna bring a bottle for his A2. <laughs> Wrong! What do you bring? Avocado toast with water, lemon, and cucumber to drink. What are you trying to do? Live into your 60s? If you're doing a Big Ten tailgate, you need to get yourself some of those artery clogging goodies. Cheese and beer! Wait, you, you want us to drink cold, non-craft beer in the snow? Yes. And while you're drinking, you will roast a pig on a spit and eat its body like barbarians. What do you do with the head? You throw it on the field. Now, let's get to the game of football itself. But not just any football. Big Ten football. Big Ten football? It's just pounding it up the middle over and over and over and over and over until you score. Twelve hours later, and unbelievably, this Californian crew is Big Ten ready. Drunken, overstuffed, and hypothermic, these three Angelinos now represent what Big Ten football is all about. Yes! If three people can learn Big Ten culture, so can three million. With 2024 fast approaching, I don't have a second to waste. Blair Thomas, played at Penn State 1985 through 89. I grew up in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, actually, when I was in 10th grade, I participated in one of the summer football camps. And I kind of got familiar with the coaches. Um, I, did, I performed well at those camps as well. Uh, coaches started wanting to show me around a little bit because uh, it was a little different back then. They didn't have the technology going that they have now where they know every kid, you know, from eighth grade on. Uh, they really had to search and find, you know, these players. So I came up to the football camp and really enjoyed myself and, and had a good time, you know, at the camps. Wow, uh, so many great players that we had on, a, on, on our, that national championship team. Uh, Shane Collin uh, has to be, you know, one of the top guys. Uh, uh, he's one of the guys that I hate going against one-on-one -on -one and, and blitz pickup. But, you know, I knew if I was going to have any type of opportunity to play afterward that I had to find a way <laughs> to step up, you know, and do things against you know, Shane, you know, we had Trey Bauer there, you know, Donnie Graham. There's so many guys that, you know, did extremely well uh, as players here. Um, DJ Dozier, you know, I, I learned a lot from him um, because I was one of those guys that emulated different running backs growing up, uh, different styles. So, you know, to try to incorporate different styles and you know, some plays you gotta be patient, some people you gotta hit hard. So, it, you know, you gotta develop that rhythm. And I learned a lot from, you know, DJ from that. Oh, I have to do it on myself. Uh, 
My freshman year, I got a chance to play early. And in the first game, uh, we was playing Maryland, at Maryland. It was blistering hot. Uh, Joe said, during the week, we're gonna play a lot of players. So everybody, you know, all hands on deck, get ready to play. So me as a true freshman, not knowing if I was gonna get in there or not, got the opportunity to get into the game. Uh, we, we jumped up on them early. So uh, I'll preface saying the first fumble wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that next week in practice, you know, Joe always do his calisthenics, you know, uh, in the back of the defense, usually all the way in the back. And then we started, you know, uh, before that we had like a little pre-practice going on. And pre-practice is harder than practice. But um, so I got a handoff and I fumbled the ball again. And he came out of nowhere. I'm Nats Thomas. You fumbled that ball again, and you would never play here. I'm like thinking to myself, never play here. Like I just got here. Like I don't even think school started yet, because that's when we came in early. And it was like never. I called my high school coach, Mr. Angelo. I don't know if this is gonna work out. This man talking about I may never play here. So that was. You know, I have to get one on myself. There you go. <laughs> Solo cup in my right hand, pig skin in my left, and it just feels so right, man. College football's bad. Ever since Chad Power tried out for the football team, we've been adopting the think fast, run fast mindset. <laughs> think fast, run fast. Think fast. Fast, think fast, run fast. Oh, crap! Ah. Ah. Personally, I think it works better on the football field. Ready, set, go! Think fast, run fast, think fast, run fast, think fast, run fast. Next time you come to Champs, just remember to keep your head on the swivel. And it was between here and Ohio State. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I chose Good the right. Choice. Yeah, I chose yes. the right place for sure. Yeah, and uh, now I'm here in my fifth year, looking uh, finished strong. So I'd like to ask a little bit about the recruiting process. When did the offers mm -hmm. start coming in for you? Uh, so I played freshman freshman year. I played freshman football. And I was like, uh, I was like, I don't know football for me, you know. I'm just yeah, sure. But I just kept working. And sophomore year, I started on varsity, and then uh, we went to the state championship. Lost to Emotep that year, got blown out, like I think 40 to three. And then after that year, uh, I think Syracuse was my first offer. Good. And then after that, it just kept coming. Uh, after my junior year, I had I think 15 to 20 offers. And that was that. Yeah. Size-wise, what were you talking sophomore year? How big versus now? Sophomore year, I was probably 6'2", like 250. Right now, I'm 6'3", like 315. We'll say 6'4". 6'4". For, 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 yeah. for the NFL scouts <laughs> out there. <laughs> scouts I mean, watch the ain't show. no need to lie. They're going to figure out. They're going to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember AQ? Do you know the name AQ Shipley? Yeah, when yeah, He yeah. won the Remington yeah, Award yeah, here. Award, so yeah. when, I was, when I was coaching here, me and him had this thing going all the time where when the game was sort of out of reach and he was out of the game, I'd go stand next to him and this and that. He'd be like, Goon, he'd be like, what's the good away from me? And he's like, dude, I'm only, I'm, I need every half inch I can get. I don't need your mutant and standing next to me. And I used to sit there like this. Hey, where are your parents? Like, get away from me, man. So he was in the, he, was, he just got done playing in the NFL last year. And he was in a, a uh, uh, Ohio State, or I think it was Ohio State that he was at. Yeah. Was Minnesota, awesome. though, too. He was in the parking lot for the first time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he was just like, this is awesome. I love it. And I, I keep on standing next to him. He's like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> I, he goes, I guess day. it don't matter no more, though. <laughs> but it was so funny. And he's like, I need every half inch I can get. I don't need you. <laughs> that is funny, though. I feel him. I feel him. So what made Penn State stand out for you during the recruiting process? Uh, really, it was... Coach Franklin, to be honest with you, uh, I remember every time I came up, he showed me and my family like tremendous love. Like, like it was just us that was there on the visit, and 
I just remember like no knock to Ohio State and the other schools, but it just wasn't the same. Like when I came here, it just felt like home. And I, I had a gut feeling like in my back of my head, I'm like, yeah, like the whole recruit process. Yep. After the first, after the the whiteout game against Ohio State when they beat them 2016, I'm like, yeah, I think Penn State's place for me. I tell people that all the time. That yeah. game for our class is what landed 90% of the yeah, kids. Crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Even the ones who weren't on the sidelines, just yeah. in, in proximity to it, watching it on yeah. TV. The whole 100%. Thing. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that after that, I was like, yeah, Penn State's for me. And I'm, ha I'm happy I chose it, yeah. for real. People don't, people don't understand. They think that you're picking Penn State over Ohio State, but you could have gone to Ohio State and won for national, played for national titles. You came here for that reason also, right. but it's about a feel you have. Mm -hmm. It's about how you feel with the coach and how you feel with the coach and your family feels with the coach. Yeah, most definitely. That, I mean, that's 100% what it is. And people are like, oh, well, you could, I mean, any one of us could have gone anywhere we wanted. Right. You know what yep. I mean? Right. But it's all on how you feel, what, what, who made you feel special. Pig skin in my left, and it just feels so right, man. College football's bad. And welcome back, everybody, to the obligatory PSU pregame show coming to you from Champs Downtown, the quintessential college bar here in the heart of Happy Valley, South Allen Street, right across from the Allen Street Gates. Fake host Chris Bucanani with Kevin Horn and Mike the Mailman. And we are into that time of the season, Kev. One of your favorite segments yes. to do is speculation about Penn State's path to the postseason bowl games and it got a little bit more muddled up i guess after the results of last week it did yeah and and no we were feeling really good about the orange we were in. the lsu beating alabama as as fun as that may have been in the interim was was actually a dagger to penn state's orange bowl hopes and i'll talk about why no by the way sports writers are so bad at this one because <laughs> yeah. they can't do math and two because now it's the popular thing on it's the true. internet to not care about bowl games they're just scrimmages who cares if you go to the orange bowl or the rose bowl or whatever if you're not winning the championship it doesn't matter there's you know right the rose bowl the guaranteed rate bowl yeah, yeah, okay. so, like, hey, um, but here, here's the situation so um, <laughs> Penn State has five opportunities to go to New Year's Six, assuming they finish. All this is predicated on them finish ten, finishing 10-2, ten and two, which they're very likely to do. Yeah. Fiesta and Peach, those are out because those are playoff bowls. You're not going. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So that leaves three left. Rose, Orange, and Cotton. Uh, Orange is looking great, and we'll get to that second, because Rose now is Penn State's most likely New Year's Six Bowl scenario. Frankly, if Penn State goes chalk and everyone, wins, everyone else in the country wins what they're supposed to and loses what they're supposed to, unfortunately... Penn State's going to Orlando for the Citrus Bowl, which is just devastating. But Rose Bowl is still very much alive. It's not even a small chance. It's, it's a decent chance, okay? Rose Bowl, of course, forever, when it's not a playoff bowl, is Pac-12 versus Big Ten. Best teams not in the playoffs, Pac-12, Big Ten. So that, Penn State is certainly going to be the highest-ranked Big Ten team, especially thanks to the Illinois to loss. Sparty, thanks, right. Sparty. Yep. Uh, Penn State will be the third-ranked Big Ten Of course, we team. can't lose to them, which no, no. is... Yeah, uh, just, uh, uh, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> will be, will be, no question, okay? Um, that, but that means that Michigan and Ohio State both have to get into the playoffs, okay? Which sounds crazy, but it's not as crazy as you think, given sort of the chaos that's going on. So let's work through it. So we have Georgia. Georgia's won. They only have Miss State, Mississippi State, Kentucky, Georgia Tech left, and then the, the championship against LSU. They're going to be two to three touchdown favorites in the regular season. Yep. Even if they lose one, Georgia is still going to the playoffs, okay? I don't think they're going to lose one, but they're certainly not losing more than one. So Georgia's in. Yep. Um, Obviously, the winner of Ohio State, Michigan, will get into the playoffs if they, assuming they win the Big Ten championship over Illinois, Illinois which a they should. A safe assumption. Right. Yeah. Penn State should prefer Michigan by a small margin. One, because Michigan's out-of-conference schedule was horrendous, and Ohio State gets a little extra juice in the playoff rankings. So we should want Michigan by a small a margin. Point. Anyway, we just want a competitive game there, and then Penn State's chances are still there. Um, one loss, Clemson. That was a big one for Penn State. Notre Dame losing, uh, or Notre Dame beating Clemson. This year's ACC is garbage. Clemson is stinks. That there's no chance that Clemson gets in with one loss, given the, the scene right now. Okay, right, right. so that leaves the loser of OSU, Michigan, uh, still undefeated TCU, Tennessee, and then Oregon, UCSC, USC, UCLA. I did what you did uh, to fight for the last two spots. Okay, so. I think Tennessee gets in. Um, they have Missouri. Wow, really, you think? Yeah, they have Missouri and Vanderbilt left, and then South Carolina on the road. South Carolina on the road is really the only possibility of a loss there. Yeah. Could be tricky, but if they win them all, they go 11-1 with... No uh, 13th data point, and the Alabama loss may be a little devalued mm -hmm. because Alabama's at minimum no. a two-loss team. 11-1 uh, in an SEC schedule gets you in, especially wow. okay. given the landscape. Okay? All right. I, think, yeah. I think Tennessee is probably 80% or more likely to get in right now, okay? 
If TCU wins out, <laughs> Penn State's locked out of the Rose almost immediately because TCU will be in the playoffs. But TCU has almost lost like five times. That's like a cat with nine lives. They have Texas, <laughs> and Baylor, and Iowa State, and then the Big 12 Championship against potential rematch with Texas again. Yep. Those are all tough opponents. They're probably going to be underdogs in at least three of those. How many Big 12 seasons have we seen go oh, like this? I, I know. <laughs> they all do. Um, yeah. So they could play Texas twice. They could probably lose to Texas twice, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Um, so... Let's, let's just assume TC loses one and probably two. They're out of the playoffs. So that pits one loss Big Ten team, Michigan, Ohio State, against the three Pac-12 contenders. And what's nice about the Pac-12 this year, they got rid of their divisions, okay? So it's um, just oh. top two teams oh, okay. in the, in the conf- conference record play each other. So um, we have, we're huge Utah fans the rest of the way because Utah has two losses. They're not going to the playoffs. Go oh, Utes. Utah's, Utes. So uh, <laughs> Oregon has Washington, Utah, and Oregon State in the regular season. Uh, Washington and Utah are good teams, obviously. Um, USC has Colorado. It'll destroy Colorado. I'm going to cut you off. We'll finish this on the other side of the break uh, after the Let's Talk Penn State segment. Didn't Stay look at the us. clock. We'll be right Let's back. Let's Talk Penn State foiling it again. Solo cup in my right hand. Pig skin in my left. And it just feels so right, man. College football's bad. Yeah, we're waking up. Tim and Steve here from the Let's Talk Penn State podcast with a few fun facts about Maryland. Do the fight song. Famous alumni from Maryland include Jim Henson of the Muppets, Larry David, Carly Fiorina, Tim Kirk, Jim. Good old baseball tonight. I forgot all about Carly Fiorina. Uh, did you know Maryland is famous for ice cream just like Penn State is? The Maryland Dairy is a great stop with some flavors like Herkin Durkin Chip and Brenda's Peanut Butter Free Seeds. Love me some Herkin Durkin Chip. Our Citizens Bank game day button this week going to be a turtle disaster. Um, and some of the previous ones, tear a pin and rigor tortoise. I like those chocolate turtles too you can get at the candy store. Hey, oh Christmas tree, we all know that song at Christmas time. It's also the same tune for Maryland My Maryland, the state song. And how about their fight song, Tim? I think it was okay. I would prefer Oh Christmas Tree. I think it was really bad. I give it a zero. <laughs> Go no state. Eat the Terps. I just want to say real quickly, thanks to the Let's Talk Penn State guys all season. They have definitely brought a little something extra to I'm the not show. Gonna, I'm not going to those segments. That. And they ruined my transition, so I'm not going <laughs> to give them that at all. Okay, so bowl scenarios, yeah. we, you were saying, we were talking working, about the we're Pac-12. We're still on the Rose. Yeah, we're going through the yeah, Pac-12. the Rose Bowl. We need the Pac-12 to cannibalize each other, right? So USC has Colorado, they're going to lose that, but then they also have UCLA and Notre Dame in the regular season. Grand Shalala, or whatever they call that little pick thing that the Notre Dame and USC play for. Yeah, I don't care. Um, they could lose both those games. We need that to happen. USC is sort of a darling this year. So um, we need, the bottom line is we need Good. a Pac-12 champion with two losses. Need that because then Pac-12 is eliminated from the playoffs. So that situation, the playoffs is just two SEC and two Big Ten, which seems crazy. But when the landscape is what it is, that is ex- highly possible. So biggest things, need TCU to pick up a loss, need Pac-12 champion to have two losses, um, and need Tennessee to get in, which I think is, is fairly likely given that they're going to be probably the best one-loss team. Now, let's say they don't. Let's say is there if Tennessee ends up being valued by the committee less than you're anticipating, yeah. could you have a playoff scenario where there is one SEC team, two Big Ten teams, and wild card? Like that gets a, you like to TCU. Yeah, that that, that, team that still something? gets you two rows. Yeah, right. That's Elim- what I thought. Okay. Eliminates orange completely, but that still gets you to rows. Okay. It's just something to watch for as yeah. the playoff rankings. Are we we don't out need two SEC. Month. We only need two SEC for Orange Bowl, which is why this got more complicated last week. So, of LSU. so that's rows. Yeah. Again, very simple. Ohio State, Michigan, in, and all those things need to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay, Rose Bowl. Uh, it, or I'm sorry, Orange Bowl is tougher. Orange is the ACC champion, which will be Clemson in all likelihood, against the highest ranked Big Ten or SEC team, not in the playoffs, not in the Sugar Bowl, not in the Rose Bowl. Okay, so that's sort of a complicated way to put it. Another way to put it is that Penn State, right now there's five SEC teams ahead of Penn State in the rankings. Yeah, okay? right. Um, so two of those we can slot for the playoffs, one we slot for Sugar Bowl, and then one is going to Orange right now. We need... Uh, we need to be ahead of, of two of those teams, at least one of those teams, right? Because a two-loss SEC team is going to be ahead of a two-loss Penn State team, sure. given the fact that Penn State, even though their losses are good, they don't have a single win this year against a team, not only a ranked team, but a team that is even getting a vote in the AP poll yeah. right now. So yeah. just Penn's, not Penn State's fault, but they've played a ridiculously weak schedule yeah. because Auburn's bad, Purdue's bad, everyone's bad, whatever. Everyone. Um, so again, let's assume Georgia and Our tennis. best win is not getting blown out by Ohio State. Right. So again, we have, this requires <laughs> this requires two SEC teams in the playoffs. So Georgia, Tennessee, let's just put it there. Um, 
and uh, LSU has Arkansas, A&M, and UAB the rest of the way. The only real shot to lose there, I think, is Arkansas. It's only three and a half point dogs this weekend, to, or three and a half point favorites to Arkansas this weekend. That could happen. If it wins all three, it plays Georgia in the SEC championship, we would need a blowout then because I still think a three loss LSU uh, SEC division champion could be above Penn State. Yeah, right. right. Uh, if it plays Georgia close. If Georgia blows them out, then there's going to be a big argument there. Ole Miss plays Bama next week. So we want Ole Miss to win because that would total, totally eliminate Bama from the picture, right? That gives them three losses. They're going to be below Penn State if that happens. Ole Miss would then jump Penn State, and they would still have Arkansas and the Egg Bowl left, either of which you could lose because Ole Miss is kind of fraudy. Yeah. But we still want them to beat Bama because that would then put Ole Miss to sugar, right? Assuming LSU loses one more game or loses in the, in the SEC championship by a lot, and then um, Alabama loses to Ole Miss, Ole Miss goes to Sugar, and then Penn State just needs to contend with a three loss, potentially LSU. So that's less likely, because the SEC teams are not punished as much as yeah, other divisions for losing to each I, other. No question. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always been so the case. Yep. Orange is tough, because now mm. that LSU beat Bama, LSU gets to hang around. LSU gets to come to the party a little bit here and screw with our Orange Bowl scenario, because they could be ahead of Penn State at the end of the year. So bottom line, Penn State wants Ohio State or Michigan to both make the playoffs, as hard as that is, that guarantees the Rose. If that can't happen, then it wants SEC chaos, I'm sorry, Pac-12 chaos, SEC chaos, orange can still happen. Um, but again, unfortunately, if you're a betting man, if, um, <laughs> it looks like Orlando is the most likely, but not by a significant margin. I think it's Orlando, Rose, and then orange is probably closer to here. But um, yeah, it would really stink to, to have uh, you, you want Bama to lose almost always, yeah. but it would really stink to have that game determine the fact we're going to the stupid bowl in Orlando that I've already seen us lose at instead of another shot at the Rose Bowl or the Orange Bowl. Yeah, and if you have a 10-win season, a chance to get to 11, it would be great to add the prestige sure. of playing in a New Year's Six Bowl Absolutely. to get there. It is a strange situation where you find yourself rooting for Notre Dame to win. You find yourself rooting for Michigan and Ohio State to both make the playoffs. I think there's a valid argument which I don't subscribe to, but it makes sense that maybe you don't want a scenario where both of your key division rivals can pitch yeah. playoff participation to recruits in the off season, but that's the only path to the Rose Bowl. I still think you root for the best postseason bowl berth for Penn State, yeah. especially when it's a difference between New Year's Six and not. Yeah. I agree, but I don't discount the other argument, right? Because yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I travel to the game, so it, it matters to me, and I have grew up a college football fans, so these bowl games still matter to me, despite the contemporary wisdom. I want to see Penn State win the Rose Bowl before the Rose Bowl is totally cannibalized by the expanded playoffs. Have, I've seen them lose there twice, so that'd be great. I've, I've, it's the Orange Bowl in 2005, one of the best Penn State games of all time. So these last two segments to are totally meaningless unless yeah. we win this weekend against Maryland. Right. We'll talk about it on the other side. Stay with us. Right. Maryland stinks. It's fine. Hi, everybody. Mike the Mailman with Week 11 of Trends to Treasure. This is for the weekend of November 18th. First up, we have the Arkansas Razorbacks hosting the Ole Miss Rebels. Arkansas is 8-1 and one in the last nine contests. So the play here is the Arkansas Razorbacks. Our second selection this week, we have the Northwestern Wildcats at the Purdue Boilermakers. Northwestern is 5-0 in the last five away contests. So the play here, Northwestern. Our third pick this week, we have the Pitt Panthers hosting the Duke Blue Devils. The Panthers are 6-0 in the last six games, so the play here is the Pitt Panthers. For our bonus selection this week, we're going back to the NFL. We have the Kansas City Chiefs at the Chargers of Los Angeles. The Chiefs are 8-1 in the last nine road games. So the players, the Kansas City Chiefs. That's it for week 11. I'm Mike the Mailman. We'll catch you next week for another edition of Trends to Treasure. And in the meantime, don't forget, bet with your head and not with your heart. Go get them. There you go. I, we're going to keep it rolling. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah we'll, I love we'll, it. We'll I love keep it rolling. You know I love it. I know. Even, even though I don't understand it. I, I, it's yeah. the obligatory PSU pregame <laughs> show. It's Maryland weekend. We are into the stretch run of the season, chasing after one of those New Year's Six Bowl berths Kevin just talked about. We're coming to you from Champs Downtown, and this is our random number generator segment, where we cap off the show by randomly generating score predictions. It's the Nittany Lions versus the Terrapins. And I, just to set a bigger picture, I think, and I'm curious what you guys will, how you'll react to this, we are in the midst of what I think is the most important four-game stretch 
of James Franklin's tenure at Penn State mm -hmm. because I think he has already answered some questions. The loss coming out of the bye week, following up the first loss with the second loss, mm -hmm. lackluster performance after losing to Ohio State. All of those things have been kind of pushed to the wayside. Improved offensive line play, true freshmen making an impact. Mm -hmm. Assistants look like they are really performing well. We believe this might be the best staff he's assembled. It's starting to look more and more like it is. One other hurdle for him to clear, getting through a season without a face palm loss to a team of inferior talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really think this game and the Michigan State game are the big hurdles there. Mm -hmm. And if he can go 4-0 and against these teams, mm -hmm. the teams that every single season you just know yeah, gonna give them, yep. we're going to trip and face plant <laughs> on right. against one of them, that's significant improvement, and as I said, that equips you with a great story to tell to all your stakeholder groups mm -hmm. going into the offseason. So you buying that, most important four games of his tenure? I don't know. I mean, I'd have to think about that question a bit more, but it's certainly important, right? Because right now it seems like everything's going the right direction. James isn't whining about the president and athletic director. You're winning games. It seemed the, the building's going up behind Lash, the new weight room. And you lose this week yeah. or over Thanksgiving weekend versus Good vibes Michigan are, State. Good vibes are gone. All off the table. And you have to deal yeah. with the Nate Bowers, the world being like, well, 93 is better than you thought before the year, but it, still it would be a disappointment. So it's... Yeah. it's I, the things, fan base will be furious, yeah, I yes, promise you. Yes, yes. Anyway. But, but what they showed last week, I mean, it gives you a lot of hope. I mean, really, I mean, more hope than we've had for a long time, I think. So let's keep it rolling and not dash it <laughs> with a right. mind-numbingly idiotic home yeah. loss, which has happened. Oh, yeah. yeah. Frequently. A annually, and practically. To, and to Maryland, actually, we, a couple times. A couple of times, yeah. absolutely. Yes, Maryland's, very good, Mike. Yeah. Maryland's That's an right. interesting team. They're six and three. They were getting AP polls or AP poll votes earlier in the yeah. year. Uh, two of his brothers, the quarter, still the quarterback. He, he's. I mean, they, look, they can't run the ball. Their defense is bad. Tua, when he's on, is good, oh, yeah. but he, his first game back was um, last week against Wisconsin. They only put up 10 points. He was terrible. Still a little a lingering injury there. So Maryland's an interesting team. They, they, they took Michigan to the wire. They only lost by a touchdown. Um, they lost to Purdue, which Penn State beat. They only lost. They only beat Indiana by five points. Um, you know, it's, it's they're, a, they're an interesting. Yeah, they are. They're interesting. It's a, it's a classic Maryland team, which will annoy teams, annoy, 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 but not <laughs> right. generally be that good. Um, I'm just thankful for finally a 3.30 game at home. Finally yeah. a little reprieve yeah. from the ridiculous schedule we've had this year, which is all noon and night. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good for the tailgates, Chris. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah cause it's, the weather is about to get super cold, Probably. so this is gonna be the last like semi-tolerable uh, environmental conditions in Happy Valley, so it's nice to get those few extra hours. So thanks to the broadcast gods for that one. I do like the matchup of their passing game versus our secondary, of course. Yeah. Not so much the mobility of uh, Talia versus the, you know our front yeah. seven, but right. I don't know that, that those offset, especially yeah. without that. I, I don't think so. Penn State's defense has been really good against one-dimensional teams or yeah. one-and-a-half-dimensional yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they don't have to worry about the running back gashing the hole, I yeah. think I think it's we're in a good spot. We think it matches up well. Who wants to randomly generate first? Mm -hmm. Jump in. Penn, uh, what, what was the what was the Indiana score? Forty something to ten. Forty something to fourteenth. Yeah. Sure. It's going to be forty something to fourteenth. Okay. All right. I really think you know uh, you know these bowl people are always looking. Uh, these poll people and bowl people are always looking for these high scores. I think Penn State's going to run it up on them. To, like you said, 45-14. Yeah, uh, 45 is not out of, out of the picture. I think it'll Penn, Penn State win by like 29, something like that. That's about 29. <laughs> Line open at 10, got to 12, yep. by the way. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know what? I liked the format we used last week, so I'm going to keep rolling with it. First, I'm going to make my randomly generated score prediction, and I am going to go with my favorite score prediction this season. I'm going to say Penn State 38-17. I don't know why. I'm just locked onto that now. Yeah. I might just predict that for the rest of the year. Why not? Yeah, why not? Halftime. Are we going to be comfortable or uncomfortable with 30 minutes gone in the game? For whatever reason, Penn State's terrible in the first quarter. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. Sean can't get – whatever, for whatever reason, the scripted plays, Clifford cannot do anything with, and that's been a trend for his entire career. Um, so – it's tough to get up. I'm going to say no, but I'll make one more bold prediction. Go for it. Charlie Katzer gets to the interception in the fourth quarter of this game. 
Okay, I, I like his, it. I like his mom now. I like it. There you go. Uh, yeah, I like Charlie. Had him on the player show a couple weeks ago. He's a lot of fun. I'm always comfortable no matter what the score is, but I, I think he'll go be comfortable with it first. You think the, yeah. the fans in general? I yeah. will be comfortable. I think you will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The majority of quarterback <laughs> snaps will be taken by Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford. Yep. Yeah, I am with uh, slightly uncomfortable at the half, but still feeling pretty good. Uh, Clifford takes the majority of the snaps. I thought it was good the way they played Aller last week, especially mm -hmm. given the weather conditions, but I would still like to see him get the 99 Richard Casey treatment. Let what? him just run a series when the score is still really in question. Yeah. Just let him get that experience. Yeah. I'm all about Sean getting in there, getting the record in front of the home crowd, but I, I would like to see Drew in, in the first half, and that not mean that Sean's day was over. Oh. Horns up, hotty toddy, two most important games of the weekend. Okay, those are the ones to watch. Yes, sir. All right. Well, we're interested in Penn State, Maryland right now. We yes. Want, we want, uh, yes. No, no. They got to take care of business no. right here. That's Longhorns and Rebels are what we need. Oh, yeah, of course. I, yeah, <laughs> Penn State just go one and all, but I am all in on these next three weeks, finishing up the most important four of James's career. We love having you here with us. Let's go State, be Terrapins, and uh, keep it rolling. Hey. So long, everybody. Three, we are. Three lost Penn State and still make the Rose Bowl. <laughs>